I will tell you how to become rich, says Warren Buffett. Be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. Be prepared to invest in a down market and to get out in a soaring market. That's the philosophy being used by Warren Buffett. Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'm analyzing Aurobindo Pharma Limited. It's a pharmaceutical manufacturing company headquartered in Hyderabad. The company manufactures generic pharmaceutical and active pharmaceutical ingredients. The company's area of activity includes six major therapeutic product areas, antibiotics, antiretrovirals, cardiovascular products, central nervous system products, gastro and anti-allergic products. The company markets these products in over 125 countries. Its marketing partners include AstraZeneca and Pfizer. Let us begin by analyzing the company's core ratios. The current market cap or value of the company in the market is 52,598 crores and the current price is 897, very near to its 52 week high of 968 rupees. And the lowest it reached in the last one year was 281, quite a gap between the high and the low. The current price to earning is 16.7, quite reasonable even though the price is were nearing its 52 week high. Book value currently stands at 313 rupees compared to the current price that's trading at almost I think less than 2.5. We'll check this out later on when we do the peer group analysis comparison. Dividend yield is very low less than 0.5 percent. Return on capital and return on equity are very much sil similar 18.7 and 18.6 percent. Face value is 1, so the current price would be around 8,970 rupees considering that if the face value had been at 10 rupees. So there's a split of shares. The current price to cash is 12 times, so it's generating a good cash against the earnings because price to earnings was 16.7 times. You don't understand any of these ratios, please refer to my older videos that I have published which are around 1, one and a half, uh, half hour long. And in those videos, I've explained in detail what each of these ratios mean. Alternatively, if you want to learn from me, please drop in an email to me and I'll get back to you. Return on equity over the five years has been dropping or has seen a degrowth of almost 12.2%. We want to see a growth in ROE over the years, which means that whatever the profits company is putting it into reserves or into the net worth of the company, on that also it should be generating higher and higher profits and therefore if that is done then we'll see a positive value in the ROE growth rate. Earning per share stands at 53 rupees compared to the current price so that was the price to earning which we can see here 897 divided by 53.6 which is 16.7. Book value three years back was 199 compared to the current book value of 313 it has gone up but not that considerably from where it was three years back. Market cap three years back was around 39,000, five years back 35,000. So at least from three and five years back there was no variation, that much variation. That is the price was quite stagnant during these two years and uh, in uh, the recent market cap has gone up to 52. So their price has gone up quite a bit from where it was three years back. The number of equity shares currently outstanding in the market is 58.6 crores. And the operating margin over the last five years on average has been at 21 percent which is a very good value my benchmark is 15. return over last one year has gone up by almost 100 percent in fact it had gone even more than 100 percent but if you had invested three years back it would have compounded it only by 10 percent and over the last five years a very low compounding return of just 1.8 percent so people who had invested just a year back approximately, they would have generated the most return on their investment. Debt is 5,211 crores compared to its balance sheet size of 30,488 crores. The debt is uh, seems to be quite high but we'll check it out debt to equity ratio a little later on in the peer group analysis. So currently it is at 5,211, preceding year or the previous year it was 6,000. 900 so it has decreased in fact so that's good and three years back it was 3364 so it has fluctuated over the years interest cost is very low 106 crores so this needs to be investigated as to at least in the recent 12 months it has paid only 106 crores so on a total debt of 5200 crores why is it paying such low interest costs that needs to be investigated 
Or is it uh, just one off or is it every year that it's paying low interest cost? It's collecting payment from its customers in 68 days whereas three years back also it was very much similar to this number of days. So the number of days of collection has not changed that significantly. Investments are 655 crores, not that significant when compared to the total balance sheet size of uh, 30,488 crores which is 10% of the total balance sheet. The working capital rather the cash equivalent is around 3478 again 10% of the total balance sheet size. So investments are very small uh, uh, quite a quite a minuscule amount compared to the balance sheet but cash is around 10% of the total balance sheet. Although this is not that bad it's okay. Trade receivables and trade payables are very much nearby so the company's collection and the payment are both at a good value or at a at a good ratio. So compared to the trade receivables of 3,812 crores, the company has to pay around 3,265 crores and it has a working positive capital cycle of 6,585 crores. So it has enough assets to pay off all these current liabilities. The overall assets in the business has increased from where it was three years back at 4,800 to net block current net block of 9,500. So this means that the company has been expanding from the last three years and almost doubled its total assets employed into the business. Total balance sheet size is at 30,488 crores. The debt to profit, now we have to also compare the balance sheet size against the market cap which is 52,000 crores. So we can get a idea, a valuation idea as to what is the balance sheet size and against that what how much premium we are paying for uh, the market cap or against the market cap. The debt is around 1.84 times its profits but that can be very easily paid off it's not that much so uh, within two years if it j keeps generating the similar profits it can pay off its debt so now we have an idea that that as such is not that big it can go up till four five times six times also it's okay that till that time also it's okay market cap to sales is also reasonable at 2.15 so we are getting at a good valuation against the sales of the current year. Profits over the last five years is 12,000 crores, almost half of the current balance sheet size of 30,000 crores. So this is a good profits generated. Cash is also equivalent to the profits generated over the five years of around 12,000. And company's free cash is almost uh, slightly less than 50% of the cash flow from operations, which I generally look at. So this, all these numbers are quite good. I would uh, just looking at these score ratios I would want to analyze further into the company to understand if I can uh, buy into this particular company. Let us look at how the price has performed over the last three years. The current price is at 8, 868 rupees per share and its simple moving average of the 50 days was 809 rupees and 200 was 717. So these are the good price points to target into for if you want to enter into this script should not buy at a very high this looks like a top of the last three years so we have to wait patiently for it to drop down and then buy into it if you look at the overall performance in terms of generation of revenue we can see a very good upward trend over the last from 2006 to 2020 onwards so every quarter it has managed to go up and up in terms of generating higher and higher revenue and uh, comparing the operating profit margin and the net profit margin is also about both 10 and 20 percent. So these are good values for this company. Looking at the price to earning, it is currently somewhere above 15 times and its median price earning is 17 of the last five years. So it is currently available at below its average of the last five years. Let us move on and look at the peer group comparison. In this particular analysis, I'm comparing it with Biocon and Cadilla Healthcare. The current price of Arbindo is 897, Biocon at 433 and Cadilla at 453 crores. All these scripts are very much near to their 52 week highest point. Biocon has to just go up 9% more or it has fallen basically 9% from its 52 weeks high. Arbindo is fallen just 7% from its 52 week high and Cadilla Healthcare has come back very much near to its 52 week high. The results for all three companies are up to date till March 2020 annually and September 2020 till the quarterly analysis. If you look at this way sales, quarter on, uh, quarterly sales YOY, 
Orbindo's sales have increased by 15 percent, Cadillac 13 and Biocon at 11 percent. So we want to see a positive growth rate YOY that is from September to September quarter. If you look at the net profit growth rate, Orbindo has generated around 24 percent of growth in its profits whereas Biocon has seen a 4 percent drop in its profits whereas Cadillac's profits have grown by from 107 crores to 473. So whenever you see this kind of high variations or high growth rate more than 20 percent needs to be investigated separately by going into individual line item. So go and check what was at 107, why it was 107 and why it is 473 now, right now. In the previous September 2019 quarter, had this particular number dropped, the sales value had it dropped, had it gone down considerably and now it has gone up. So then that will give you this kind of high variations. So needs to be checked individually. If you look at the entire year's sales, of 2020 of around 23,000 crores and compare it with the recent 12 months, Orbindo's sales have gone up. So has for both Biocon and Cadilla from 6,300 to 6,700 and Cadilla from 14,200 to 14,800. So all these three companies have managed to generate higher revenue compared to its March 2020 values. Profit wise, Orbindo has gained from 2,800 to 3,141 crores in the recent 12 months. Whereas Biocon has seen a drop from 812 crores to 752. Even Cadilla Healthcare has seen its overall profits increase from 1400 to 1800. If we compare the March 2020 profits, Aurobindo had generated around 2800 and shown a cash from operations of around 4300. So this is so this is a good value that the company is generating cash. But in Biocon's case, also we see that 812 profits shown and 1,283 crores of cash coming in through operating activity. And mo all three companies are basically generating higher cash than the profit being declared. The current price earning for Orbindo is 16, 69 for Biocon, very expensive. But if you see it's over five and three years period, it had been always trading at a high price to earning premium. Cadillac is also expensive at around 25 times its average has been around 21.7 so in these three companies i find orbindo quite reasonable at 16.7 times its earnings when compared to price to ocf it's much better at around 12 times whereas biocon is at 40 times and cadillac 18 times so at least cadillac is generating a good uh, cash compared to the biocon uh, biocon's cash flow generation we will understand why Biocon is trading at such extreme premium valuations in terms of price earning price cash. Price book wise also if you see Biocon is quoting at around 7.3 times. So it needs to be understood what is creating such a buzz or growth or uh, in terms of uh, rather what is this high multiple why people are giving high multiple to this company. So with this numbers when we analyze these numbers that will become more clearer. Cadillas Price to book is also expensive at 3.9. So all three companies are expensive as of now, book wise. PEG wise, Biocon is uh, very expensive, 7.3, 5.3. Even Cadillac is expensive. The most reasonable in terms of price earning paid and profit growth received or being uh, uh, profit growth being done by the company is Orbindo at 1.3 and 2.2. Profits for Orbindo have been growing at 12%. Over the last five years, Biocon at 13 and Cadillac at 4. So the lowest growth rate is again for Cadillac at just 4. And in fact, in the recent three years, it has even seen a degrowth in its profits. Whereas Biocon's profits are also very low. Orbindo is generating profits at around 12 and 7% over long five and three year period. Whereas sales have also seen double digit growth rate for all these three companies over both long term averages of five and three years. Return on equity, for all these three companies, especially Biocon and Cadillac is quite low at 12 and 14 percent, whereas ROE of Arvindo is around 18. Over the long term averages of five and three years also, it had been trading above 15 percent. But Biocon's ROE values are quite low. In fact, ROC is also below 15 percent. So why it is getting such a high premium, I fail to understand. If somebody knows, they can let me know in the comment section and help me out. Cadillac Healthcare is generating around 21 percent of roe over the last five years and 18 percent over the last three years so currently it has slightly gone below the 15 percent benchmark that i have set 
in terms of ROC, Cadillac's ROC also is quite low compared to 16 and 14 percent, but overall five years period it's still good above 15 percent. Whereas Aurobindo's uh, ROC over the long term average is 21 and 19 percent, which is a good value. Biocon has not managed to generate that much of returns on capital employed or EBIT on the total capital employed into the business. Return on total assets, that is the profits generated on the total assets employed into the business is around 15% for Aurobindo and 14 for Cadilla. Very low returns for Biocon. Asset turnover, which is, uh, it signifies that what was the assets employed into the business and how much is the sales or revenue generated. The higher the better. Again, Orbinda generated almost equivalent sales as it, had, as it had assets into the business. Biocon has also generated slightly lower, 68% of the sales when compared to their total assets employed into the business. So below one times for both Cadillac and Biocon. Inventory turnover also is around two less than two times for all of these companies, which is not a very good value or a bad value, but generally suggests that they have uh, high inventory holding compared to the cost of goods that they have sold. Profits of the last five years was 12,000 crores, 3,000 for Biocon and 8,500 for Cadilla. Comparing that with the cash flow of the long term, out of the 12,000, it has al already received 12,685 crores and 5,245 crores left out as free cash. So a reasonable number or a good way of understanding that the company is being run efficiently in terms of generation of cash and a good substantial portion of that is still left out as free cash. In Biocon's case, we see that although it had generated cash, but almost all of it that has been used up, over and above that 1,349 crore additional has been used up. And that is why we see a higher debt to equity ratio or more borrowings in this company. Same is the case for Cadilla where almost entire cash flows of the last five years has been used up and it has currently only 1000 almost 1050 crores left for uh, distribution for other purposes if you look at the average profits of the last five years 2400 every year is being generated by orbindo 626 by biocon and 1700 for cadilla so the uh, company orbindo company is uh, generating a good amount of profits every year for the shareholders. In terms of market cap, all three companies are almost equivalent of slightly between Cadillac is at around 46,000, Biocon at 51,000 and Orbindo at 52,000. Whereas net worth wise, if we see, Orbindo is only 18,000 crore company, 7,000 for Biocon and 11 for Cadilla. So there's a variation in terms of net worth, but market cap wise, all three are trading at around the same price range. Contingent liability for all three companies is good. It's not that high. Debt to equity is highest for Cadillac at 0.48, Biocon at 0.38 and Orbindo at 0.28. So uh, the debt to equity is reasonable for all three and therefore they all have good interest coverage of more than four times. The, the more the debt to equity, the less the coverage. Orbindo's promoters have pledged around 9.3% of their total share, shareholding of 52%. Biocon and Cadilla Healthcare promoters haven't pledged anything and their shareholding is also quite high. Debtors to sales ratio is reasonable for all of these three, but Cadilla has a very high debtors to sales ratio of almost 22%. I don't want this to exceed 30% uh, of the sales. Even when you look at the debtor days, this Cadilla's debtor days or collection days is gone above my benchmark of 90 whereas Biocon is 70 and Orbindo is 68. So this basically shows efficiency in how fast the company is collecting payment from its customers. Net profit margin for all three is about 10%, which is again my benchmark. Dividend, most of these companies are not paying that substantial dividend. Moving on, we'll look at the shareholding pattern. In September, as of September 2020, promoters held 52%, foreigners held 23%, DIS 13 and public 11. This is a very good ratio of the percentage holding in any company. This is what we should look for when we are analyzing a company that there should be a good spread out of holdings. 
not any one should one one entity holding a major portion of the total company and we can see a quite a stable percentage holding of FIIs and DIIs so you want to see a stability that these institutions don't sell off all of a sudden there is not high variations so look for that having said that if you enjoyed watching this video do consider subscribing if you haven't please share it with your friends thank you so much for watching this video have a nice day